you know, we have all these like Christmas traditions and everything. Maybe there's some meals you do, and then suddenly Christmas is over, right? Uh, you know, <laughs> gonna shoot your eye out, kid. Uh, <laughs> So it's sort of, this is kind of the day after Christmas, and, uh, you know, it's interesting because you kind of, when you make decisions on what to preach on around Christmas, I know most of you would think, well, how does Jeff decide these things? But you kind of have to, around Christmas, I think, because of the, the anticipation of Christmas, uh, it's easy to kind of for Christmas to sneak up on you. So I like to do a Christmas series uh, and then you kind of that kind of makes you sort of choose a lot of the same texts and things because, you know, we, we choose the Christmas text and, and some of the sermons are a little shorter, which some of you appreciate because, you know, it's it, it's it's stuff that maybe you're familiar with if you go to church a lot, uh, and and so this is sort of post Christmas. But if you go into the Book of Luke and you look at the Christmas story, there's also some post Christmas stuff. So after the shepherds and all that kind of things happen, and so we're going to go into um, Luke chapter 2, just after Christmas. So if you, if you went to Christmas Eve or even the week before uh, in church, we kind of talked up to that point. And so verse 21 says this, it says, eight days later when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel even before he was conceived. So eight days later, um, you know, it, it was required by law for the, for the males to become circumcised. If you don't know what that is, we're PG-13 here. You can figure that out. But it, circumcision itself w- was this really important thing in Judaism. Uh, and so it was kind of the, the mark of what it meant to, to be Jewish. It was really important in that, in, in that time. Uh, it really kind of separated the Jewish people from the Gentiles, the other nations. Uh, it, it was something that was given uh, by God to them as something to do. Uh, there was Abraham it had, had circumcision. If you read your Old Testament, your Hebrew Bible, it was in the law. And it was so important. I mean, if you know much about Judaism, like it's really important to keep the Sabbath, Right? But that was like one of the few things you could do on the Sabbath. So if it fell even on a Sabbath, you know, you, you would do it. And so he's given the name uh, Jesus, uh, which is the Greek form of the Hebrew name uh, Yeshua. Uh, and it, and it, it means to save. And so again, it, it's underscoring what Jesus' mission is, is he comes to save. And, and he goes and he's circumcised. And then, and then it was time for the purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says a woman's first boy, child is a boy. She, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So he offered the sacrifice required in the law of the Lord. Either a pair of turtle doves, and anyone else sing that song? And a pair of two, two turtle doves. Anyway, <laughs> or, or two young pigeons. And so it was time for the purification offering. Now, um, it was funny because you start like, looking into the kind of the history of things. It was 40 days after the birth, so the seventh, the offering, eighth day circumcision, 33. Anyway, <laughs> and, and so it, it was ultimately, you know, the, the firstborn was to be dedicated to God, and so it was to redeem the firstborn. And, the, uh, and so Mary, uh, uh, you know, sprinkled with blood or so, uh, it was and things to, to, to kind of, to, to point, uh, you know, to, to do this sacrifice that the law required. And there's a certain irony for those of us who kind of know afterwards, because ultimately, her son's blood is going to cover all of our sins. And so I, I don't know, I, I think of that in there. It says, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And again, a partridge in a pear tree. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it was interesting because that sacrifice, and maybe you don't think about it, and they offer, you know, uh, the, the, the two dudge. It was kind of the sacrifice for the po folks. Uh, you know, if you didn't have as much money, you know, you couldn't afford like a bigger sacrifice. They they kind of come and they get, they give the uh, the the middle class, lower class, uh, and it kind of points to us that Joseph and Mary didn't have a lot of money, uh, which is kind of further evidence because I know I often talk about the timing of the wise men because I think about such things. And again, if I go to your house and you have a little thing and the wise men are there at the manger, I will steal your wise men and put them somewhere else in your house. So if, if I go over, if you invite me over and your wise men are missing, you can call me or text me or I'll, you know, 
or you can just keep searching the house because they're somewhere. And then we, we think they may have been like two years. So we have a three-year process that gets, we, when we set out our manger scene, we have a three-year process and the, the wise men move a little bit each day. No, we don't do all that. But, but further evidence, you know, that, you know the wise men, because wise men show up, what do they show up with? Not the story we're talking about today, but gold. <laughs> Franken, everyone's like, I don't know, Jeff's going to ruin something else for me. I better not. Anyway, gold, frankincense, myrrh. So if they had gold, they could have gotten a better sacrifice. I'm just saying. Um, and then they had their, the, uh, apparently they brought, um, you know, essential oils, frankincense and myrrh. Um, <laughs> so um, it, it's just kind of interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, the prophecy, uh, and it says this and this. At that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly awaiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he'd seen the Lord's Messiah. And so Simeon, think old man with a white beard. Now I know who else you're thinking of. But, <laughs> uh, you know, Santa gets higher building the Simeon. But Simeon uh, is sort of this guy after Christmas... Uh, you know, and, and he's like, he's sort of left out of most Christmas stories, right? When you think of Christmas, do you immediately think of Simeon? Anyone think of Simeon? No, you don't. He gets left out. No one's like, like you cast a little Christmas play. No one's like, who gets to play Simeon? Okay, you show up like a week later, 40 days later. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, and it, 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 he's sort of, it, but he's sort of an, an important character. Uh, in the Christmas story, it's setting up who Jesus is. And I always think of it, again, as like a... You know, when you watch movies, anyone watch the credits? I feel this weird obligation. You're going to think less of me when I tell you this. I try to read all the credits as they scroll through. Because I feel like if someone did something for the movie, they ought to get credit for it. I'm always like, who's the key grip? Uh, you know, <laughs> some of you are like, I don't even know what a grip is. And who's the key grip? I don't know. Anyway, they're really important. That has to do with lighting and all kinds of things. Um, you know, they they kind of, they play a major part because, you know, if you like a movie, there's all these people that play their part, even though you may not see it immediately. And Simeon's one of those guys. He has his part to play, uh, but, um, you know, <laughs> and he's sort of, he's kind of in tune with God when, when everyone else seems to be missing something out. And, and so, you know, he was, it says he was old. Now, when I, when I say someone's so old, I immediately think, you know, one of myself, but two, you know, it's like you think of like old jokes, yo mama so old, uh, anyone, uh, <laughs> When you were a kid, rainbows were black and white, you know. I, jokingly, we were talking about our social security digit the other night with my kids. I'm like, yeah, mine's like four digits. Um, <laughs> it's not, but it's, you know, when you're a little bit older, it's, you know, their last name's Osaurus. <laughs> There's no history class in school. Uh, your birth certificate is expired. Jurassic Park brings back memories. Come on. <laughs> you, you know some of these. Uh, <laughs> Your first Christmas was the first Christmas. Uh, <laughs> but that's true here. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, you know, and so Simeon was this old guy. He, he prayed for years, expecting, and I kind of picture him. I don't know how you picture him. Maybe, well, until today, maybe some of you didn't even think much about this guy, right? But I kind of picture him as sort of this old guy who, you know, it, it said, you know, he, he was revealed that, you know, hey, you're, you're going to see the Messiah before you die. I kind of wonder, like, how long you had to wait, though. Because it's one thing if God says, oh, you won't see this before you die. And then, like, you're, like, really old. And you're, like, I'm about to go, so it's going to be quick. I wonder if it was, like, years and years. And, and like, I kind of picture him, like, hanging out in the temple, sort of waiting. Like, and every baby coming in is, like, is this the one? No. Nah. Okay, is this the one? No. Nah. Is this the one? <laughs> uh, that's how I, I imagine it. And, and imagine holding your, waiting your whole life for something, and it just kind of never comes. And then there's this moment. Suddenly, Jesus is there. And Simeon's like, and God's like, hey, that's the one. He's like, ah, the one, finally. <laughs> it says he was righteous and devout, and the Holy Spirit um, was upon him. And, you know, I mean, if you're going to have something on your resume, that's a pretty good one, right? The Holy Spirit is upon you. Now, it was interesting because I recently, for another, for another church, I, I sit on their board, and I, have to, I had to, like, pick a pastor for them. And it was, like, interesting because you're looking at people's resumes, and you're like, man, this is like a weighty responsibility. I, I was praying hard. I'm like, God, you better make it clear to me. <laughs> like, and then you're, like, trying to evaluate resumes. For pastors, it's really weird because, you know, 
I don't know, because you're in the game, and so I don't know. <laughs> and you're kind of looking for things like to kind of make someone stand out. And really what makes Simeon stand out is that, uh, you know, hey, the Holy Spirit was upon him. <laughs> uh, man, I still remember, some of you know this story, a couple years ago, uh, and he actually moved back. Some of you met him. He's, the, he's also the kid I kicked one time. I told you, like, I, I get scared when I, I know. You're like, what? <laughs> Kicking kids? No, when I get scared, I kick. And so this kid one time, he was hiding in the back of something. We were running this event. I was, like, running. I had, like, the, you know, some things. I had to run to my office and everything. It was dark. And I'd kind of run through the hallways because I'm the kind of guy who always, like, I know if I know where I am, I don't need the lights on. Like, I knew where. And he jumped out from a corner with the lights out and everything. He goes, ha! And he scared me, and I kicked him. I mean, he went down hard. And, and like, he's, like, he's down on the ground. I got you. I got you. I'm like, oh, yeah, you did. Don't tell your mom. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, so year, years later, he, he applied for an internship, and, you know, uh, they called me. And I could tell the girl on the other end was young. Like, she was, like, reading the questions that she has to read off the sheet and everything. I, and so she gets to the, how do you know the applicant? And, I'm, and it was, like, for a ministry job. And I was like, I'm his parole officer. And she's like, what? Do you, uh, what? <laughs> And I let her go for a couple of minutes of stammering, trying to think of what to say next. And then I was like, all right, I'm kidding. I was, I'm his youth pastor. <laughs> uh, anyway, he, he somehow got the uh, position. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, that, that's kind of, you know. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the Holy Spirit was upon him. Anyway, <laughs> it says, eagerly awaiting for the Messiah to come and rescue um, Israel. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but I hate waiting in line. I mean, like, I go to Sam's Club the other... I, I, I love the self-checkout at Sam's because there's usually no line. I went up the other day. I had to go through the line, and I, I found the line without anyone in it. I, man, it was like, like a Festivus miracle. You were like... I was like, oh, my gosh. And I bought... And some of you saw the picture in the Deep Water. If you're on the Deep Water Facebook group, see that picture? That was cool. I found, shoe, like, really nice shoes. And, man, I, sh I got to show up. Um, we do a lot with the homeless and Code Purple. And so I, I showed up with a... I filled my entire... Uh, car full of like nice, good quality shoes at a cheap price. Can I get an amen? <laughs> so some of you saw that picture. It was pretty cool. It was fun. Anyway, I hate waiting in line. Um, <laughs> you know, that's the one thing I like. I like self-checkout for that reason. Uh, you know, and, and so I, I, I hate waiting. And so he's like eagerly waiting though. And it, I don't know. How, it wasn't a long line, but it was a long wait. And, and I get frustrated when I have to wait. I mean, I, I, I hate the microwave because it takes endless seconds to do something. I mean, and I, and I remember when you had to, like, and some of you are younger, you don't realize it. We had to cook on, like, stoves and things and with ovens, and some of you know what I mean. <laughs> some of you are like, what is this you speak of? There was a time before the microwave. It was ancient Israel when we had, <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> you know, and we tend, to, we tend to equate waiting with wasting, right? Because I always feel like I got something better to do than wait in line. And when I'm in traffic, I always feel like I got something better to do than sit in this traffic. And I have to put on something to kind of keep my mind out of there. <laughs> um, but, you know, sometimes, when, you know, <laughs> waiting's not a bad thing. Um, and, it says, you know, and I wonder how hard it was for Simon to wait. And wait. And wait some more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's kind of like slow Wi-Fi. Uh, and sometimes God takes longer than we hope or expect on stuff. Now, kind of, we're talking about Simeon. We're kind of, maybe, now we kind of might be talking about your life. Because sometimes there's something you're waiting for. Maybe something you're kind of waiting for God to do. And, and something you're confident that God is going to do. But it doesn't come when you want, right? I'm, I'm sure I'm the only one who's ever been in that situation. And the rest of you, are, you know, get your things immediately. Anyway... <laughs> It says, that day the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, <laughs> I always think of this like, like, did he ask, like, you'd like to take the child? And some of you who have, have had kids know what I mean. It's like, people just take babies sometimes. We were at a we were at a restaurant one time, and I had Josh and Elle, and they ran off with Elle, and I'm sitting there like, do I, do I chase the person who just ran off with the baby? And, you, and then Denise came around the corner. I'm like, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> she got the baby back. <laughs> she got the baby back, baby back, baby back. But uh, <laughs> chillies. It wasn't chillies. But anyway, you know, 
you know, people just take your baby. So I picture, like, is he the kind of guy who asked or did he just take? I don't know. Uh, but, you know, anyway, old guy comes in, takes a baby. It says this, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. And, and so the Holy Spirit just kind of leads him in there at the right time. And, and that's kind of... That's sort of a, a little mini sermon in there on itself because sometimes the Holy Spirit will lead you to things. Uh, so be, uh, you know, because if you become a believer, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. It just kind of leads you to places. I got stories of that I'll tell you sometime. Uh, it says he took the child in his arms. You know, he just kind of grabs him. <laughs> and he is, he's going to be salvation to the nations. You know, and Jesus ultimately brings salvation to Israel, but also to the Gentiles. It's, it, it's not just uh, for Israel. And, you know, it says, now let your servant die in peace. <laughs> and, uh, um, I just I kind of, it's you know, peace out, drops the mic, not the baby. <laughs> uh, I, I kind of wonder if he'd, like, die right after. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, and I know somebody, was, I was reading this story, this guy was giving a, a, ser- like a sermon at a funeral, and he said, you never know when you're going to go. And then the guy died. So the pastor died at the funeral when he said that. Now, that would be an awesome point. I wouldn't mind going out like that. If that's how God wants to take me out, I hope I go sometime. I'm preaching to y'all. And I'm like, you never know. You got to be ready. You never know. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be cool, John. <laughs> Not for the rest of y'all, but for me, because I'm in heaven after that. So, <laughs> And that would be a sermon illustration none of y'all would ever forget. <laughs> Remember that time the pastor died during the sermon? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a message you can only deliver once, though, you know? Like, if you got two services, you got to pick one. <laughs> anyway, what would you do for the second service if the pastor died in the first? I don't know. I got, I got questions. Some of you are wondering. We, got, we, we, do, we have a sermon saved, like, in video form in case I don't show up. Because I was telling some of you, the one, ser- one time I, I kind of... I was like, I lost track of time. I was waiting for somebody. Things happened, and I was late, and they, people were like, where's Jeff? Remember? Yeah, every, yeah, the people all remember that. They're like, because anyone who was on the worship team was like, just keep playing, just keep playing. <laughs> anyway, we're getting off subject, but hey, <laughs> welcome to deep water. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's like he spent kind of his whole life waiting for Christmas, <laughs> and it came, and now he's ready to die. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it gets to see the Messiah. And, and, you, know, and uh, you know, there's this kind of this hope because ultimately, you know, <laughs> you know, he hoped in something. He gets to see the redemption of Israel. He gets to see the beginning of it. He doesn't get to see the end because I'm thinking, you know, he's already pretty old and Jesus doesn't really start public ministry. So that's another 30 years. Uh, I guess he could have been a lot. We don't know exactly when he went out. <laughs> but, but, you know, it probably didn't make it. It says this, Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, the baby's mother, this child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your very soul. Uh, And I kind of picture Mary there like a bit overwhelmed. I mean, a sword will pierce your very soul. That's a bit confusing. Uh, I, I kind of I picture Mary going, um, you know, you keep using that word. I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> Some of you like Princess Bride. You know, we do baby dedications here. Uh, we did one a couple weeks ago, and that would be like the strangest, most awkward baby dedication. Um, you know, if I was like, <laughs> a sword will pierce your very soul. And people are like, we were just hoping for like a kid's Bible and a certificate. Uh, <laughs> But it's ultimately, it's fitting because this baby is so different, right? Uh, and ultimately, you know, Jesus' life is this fulfillment of the Old Testament Bible, the Hebrew Bible. Uh, and then, so then Anna comes in. And Anna's like, yes, my name gets to, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jeff's not in the Bible. I did, I did find someone named Jephthah. And so I tell people that's my name. It's J-E-P-H-T. Anyway, it's not. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Anna, a prophet, <laughs> was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died when they, when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived uh, as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, 
if if Anna is a, if Simeon's a minor character, Anna's the uncredited actress. I mean, <laughs> she's this kind of you. Maybe you. Maybe some of you've never even heard this this story, or 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 even if you read the Bible, it's easy to kind of glance over this section, right? Because you just read the Christmas story. You're familiar with that. You're like, that's cool. And then you're like, oh, there's some prophecies and stuff. And let's get to like what you know. And then next they lose Jesus. But that's a whole other sermon for a whole other day. <laughs> it says, you know, it's in the, they're there in the temple. Uh, they hang out all day. Now, some of you, I, I kind of picture this like, some, you ever go to Panera? Like, I remember, like, I, sometimes I have to travel and I stop at places like Panera because, like, I'll get early to a meeting. I know some of you are like, Jeff's early to a meeting. But when you're driving four hours to get to a meeting, you end up early. I try to, like, I remember trying to go to Panera one time in Harrisburg, and it was like everybody was there. It was like, and you could tell they were hanging out all day. This was like pre-COVID. And, like, this one guy's talking to this other guy. He's like, oh, I'll be here in the afternoon. And I'm thinking, you just working all day at this Panera. <laughs> you know, like, you just don't. And that's kind of how I picture Anna is just hanging out at the temple. <laughs> you know, and she's, she's there as long as it's open. The temple is her Panera. Now, and it's interesting because when you look culturally, anywhere from 14 to 17 at marriage, and uh, there's a whole you know, debate over that, and 21 to 24, then when her husband died, so like 63, 60, 63 years in the temple, I mean, that's a long time, that's like most of your life, like, like that, 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 that is a bit of time, and so she's been there, she's hanging out, and she comes along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God, she talked to the child to everyone who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem, so it's just interruption. Uh, it's like the middle, it'll be like the middle of baby dedication. Somebody comes up and interrupts. <laughs> uh, it's, again, you know, when Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom, and God's favor was on him. Uh, and so it's this amazing story. Ultimately, I mean, the reason we celebrate Christmas is Jesus is different than other babies, right? He's, uh, you know, uh, it's this amazing story. And, and you know, in Galatians 4.4, 4, it says, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. And I, I like the New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV says it. Uh, it says, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who are under the law so we might receive adoption as children. When the time was right. You know, sacrifices were all offered, but ultimately, you know, her son is the one that will cleanse them all. And ultimately, we celebrate his coming at Christmas, but, but it's really, it's just a precursor to his mission. I can't help but, like, I mean, it's kind of like, I don't want to be Debbie Downer. I mean, we're looking at Jesus coming at Christmas, little tiny baby Jesus, <laughs> you know, but we ultimately look to Easter, his mission. Spoiler alert. You know, he, he comes, he lives the life we couldn't live, ultimately, so that we can have life in him. Uh, this child is, caused, is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. Uh, you know, all, often truth brings division. You know, and Jesus is like, wasn't what some expected. And if you read the rest of the gospel, and that'd be a good challenge for you this year, read the gospel of Luke. Uh, in January, uh, you know, and if you if you read the rest of the story, you know, there, there's times when people are opposed to Jesus. The very people who are the religious elite and established are often the ones that are most at odds with him. Uh, you know, and, and Jesus wasn't what some people expected. He wasn't what people wanted. Uh, and, and ultimately, sometimes that means when you take hold of the hope that there is in Jesus, it, it sometimes friends will leave you. Sometimes family abandons you because to really, to really live by the words of Jesus is a challenge.